a lot of baits that you're going to hear about and talk about are very seasonal, right? A frog. A frog is great when that water gets warmer in the summer. It's awesome more. But a frog isn't always tied on in my, in my box. But this one is on year round. And here are some of the reasons why I love this thing. It's weedless and it's snagless. And, and we're going to look at this thing, and especially traditional style spinnerbaits. Look at the design of that thing. It's called a safety pin design. Look at that thing. Safety pin design. And because that hook is protected, look at that thing. There's your hook. Dude, it's encapsulated by that wire and those blades. Dude, the thing is super weedless, super snagless. Flash. Very key, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to spend a whole page on flash, which is one of the key elements to this lure. How many of you have seen shad or herring or any kind of bait fish swimming around naturally in the water? When you watch them swim, what do you see in the water? Flash. See a flash. Dude, it's so natural. And that flash is instinctive. When that fish sees a flash, a, that shine, that, that flash of that blade, that tells that bass, that's, a, that's an easy meal. That's something I want to eat. Vibration. Man, when that water gets stained and muddy, they start feeding less on sight and start feeding on vibration. How many fishery biologists in the room? Anybody? You're a fisheries biologist. Awesome. What year did you graduate? You didn't? Okay. Last year. I'm not a fisheries biologist, but I can tell you when that water gets ugly, when it gets dirty and stained and muddy, they stop feeding by sight and they feed by vibration with their lateral line. And these lures, especially with, with one of these blade types we're going to talk about, provides a tremendous amount of vibration and lets them find that bait. It's a perfect imitator of bait fish. You know, this is the early version of the Alabama rig, right? You know, if you look at it, when you get a combination of blades together, moving and flashing and vibrating, dude, those things look like a school of bait. And just like with the Alabama rig, when those fish see those blades flashing and vibrating, it mesmerizes them to a certain extent. And, and they, they have to go eat it because it's, it looks real. And, and the last one I wanted to mention, just like we talked about the power jig head techniques. They're great because, man, when the fish are biting, I can throw this thing out there and, and they're going to eat it. They're going to smoke it. I can, we'll look at some retrieves and I could just retrieve it medium and they'll eat it. Just stupid retrieve it and they eat it. But when they're not biting, with certain movements of this bait, we're going to get those fish to bite, even when they're not biting. Next one. All right. In this presentation, this is the biggest thing that I want to talk about besides the movements of these baits, the retrieves. I want to talk about picking the right spinnerbait. Because here's the deal. Most people, when they see a spinnerbait, they lump it into one giant category, right? That's just the spinnerbait. Cool. I've got a skirted jig in my box, and I've got a shaky worm, and I've got a spinnerbait and I'm good to go. I own a spinnerbait. But there's a perfect spinnerbait for every condition. And the information Bass University provides isn't your basic run-of-the-mill fishing video. This is specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly.